Hey everyone, I thought today I would do a video on the future of DMZ. It's been on my mind for a while what's going on and, you know, the direction that it's moving in. And obviously everyone has their own opinions on this and I wanted to give mine. So with the current state of DMZ, a lot of players are either frustrated that PvP is so predominant or frustrated that the AI is, seems insurmountable whenever you seem to face them. And there's no other modes. You have to infill in with either a team, duo or solo, but it means you are always going to be up against potentially three players on an opposing team. Now... Activision's made it very clear that they will not be separating modes. And my thoughts on that, I, I kind of understand, you know, they want to introduce different maps, different arenas, different spots that you can go visit, which will be a server, and you can infill on your own and you can do it your own way. That's one thing I love about DMZ. I don't have to go in with a team if I don't want to. I can do things that are challenging, I can face teams, I can, you know, face AI, and I can do all that however I want. That's what I love about DMZ. This is something that I has kept me on Call of Duty for a long time. I'm not a multiplayer guy. I don't enjoy multiplayer anymore. It's not for me. You know, once upon a time, multiplayer was fun. Nowadays, it's just people sitting in corners, people camping, and with the movement being the way it is, people just don't move as much. You know, you come around a corner, you get sniped in the head, and it's not fun. I loved third-person mode, and that would have been something I would have loved to have seen in DMZ, but again, Activision's made that very clear that that is never going to happen. So, a couple of things I would love to see in the new future content coming, and I'm hoping it's on the rise, but as it stands, the rumours are not looking great for Season 3. You know, the rumours are missions aren't going to reset. You know, there's been no talk about whether or not there'll be new cases available. There's no talk whether or not, you know, there'll be other objectives available. And I think that's just pretty slack. Considering a lot of people love playing DMZ, they love the casual element to this game, and they feel like they can play it their own way. You know, if they want to party up, they can party up. My biggest problem with DMZ at the moment is the party functionality. Now, the original intention of this was to, you know, combat difficult missions, but... It's not working that way. All that is happening is you end up in a six-man team and they stomp the server. Now, I'm going to say this outright. A Sheikah should not have the option, just like Building 21. Six players on a Sheikah when the maximum that spawn in is 18 is just ridiculous. It means a third of the server is running around killing everyone else and at no penalty to them. So I think that needs to change. Ashika needs to remove the six-man component. Three people is enough. My next thing is, with the partying up system, I don't disagree with it per se in our Mazra because it is such a large map. However, when it comes to hunt squads, I think it needs to be clearer how many players are hunting you. If you get a hunt squad put on you, it should say five players are hunting you, six players are hunting you. That way, if you're a solo or a duo, you go, oh, nah, not dealing with that. Let's get out of here or let's get in a vehicle and go hide somewhere. Let's go somewhere out of the reach of these players. But you don't know. You know, you've got no real indication. You just suddenly have a hunt squad and then they have a bar progress of when they're coming closer. And even that doesn't seem sufficient to me. Like, I've, I've got multiple clips where the bar is one, and then within three seconds they're on top of me because they're in a heli or something like that. And I have very little time to react. I just got to brace for impact and hope that I can beat them all. And don't get me wrong, I've got plenty, plenty of footage of me beating a six-man team with either duo or trio or whatever it is. 
But right now, I just I feel like if we're going to keep hum squads in, it needs to be betterly notified. The distance needs to be more notified. Like it should give us a meter range. How far away are they? Oh, they're on the other side of the map. I don't have to stress straight away. But if I get it and it's already on two bars, it should be like, oh, they are within 300, 400 meters of me. So I know they can start sniping at me. That's one of my biggest problems at the moment. Especially with six-man teams. If a six-man team picks up a hunt squad, you know, and they're nearby, like, nobody's got any time to react to that. My next point, and this is about long-term playability. You know, I haven't played a lot of looter shooters other than, you know, Tom Clancy, The Division, things like that. Um, I haven't played extraction shooters like Tarkov. I hope I'm saying that correctly. If I'm not, let me know. Um, those games never appeal to me. I don't like that hardcore style gameplay. I love the sort of semi-casual nature of DMZ. I love it. With that being said, though, one thing that I know is very lacking with this is collectibles. You know, you have all these locked spaces. I should be able to pick up an item from that that says, yeah, you've gone in there. There's a story part to that. That particular, you know, door has a has a document in it. And most of them do. You know, even on a Sheikah, like the water pump room, you go in there, there's a little note and has some writing on it. I should be able to extract with that and then look at it in the menu. A collectible that I can then complete. And once I get X amount of collectibles, you know, I get a completion sticker. Very simple concept. You know, stuff that's been in other games all the time. It would give DMZ players something to do other than run around hunting each other. Because I'll tell you what, I've done most of the tiers already. Like, I'm already up to tier 5 on pretty much all my missions. And some of them are a little, you know, draining. Some of them are a little grindy. I mean, trying to find a Damascus tag is near impossible. Um, but, it, you know, that's that's the nature of the game. And it's a bit of luck. But it means I have to go around killing every player I find and hope that they had done enough infills to get that. But, look, I'm not sure why. At the moment, there is no reason... Once tier 5s are completed, there is nothing. There is nothing to do. So, what, you, you, I, I start trying to break records, how many AI I can kill in a game solo. I start seeing how many players I can kill solo. You know, like, what's the measure anymore? There's nothing to compete for, there's nothing there. You know, in Warzone, you complete it, you get a win. Awesome. But in, in DMZ, just, that's it, you exfil... Cool. All the money you get, all the special items, the collectibles. Like, one thing I would love to see is, and other people have said this as well, but my version, I think, look, might be a little bit better, more interesting. It's just a visual thing. It's just a key locker. And it just shows what keys you've had before. So, uses, how many times you've used them. Versus keys that you've not unlocked, like spaces you've not unlocked. You know, I would love to see that. Hey, I've never actually unlocked this item. Oh, but I have the key. Maybe I'll go find it. It has a collectible note in it. I can finish this story. Hey, this story directly connects to, you know, Automograd or um, connects to Campaign. That would be awesome to see, you know, like just little things like that will keep players engaged. You know, if you're going around doing Easter egg hunts, that would be great. But that's not there currently. And I get it, it's a beta. But a lot of people love this. It's a nice break from the seriousness that is Call of Duty. You know, Warzone's so full on. I love it sometimes, I still play it. But sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I just want to come in, do some stuff, do some missions, kill some bots, kill some players, get out. You know, 20 minutes, half an hour well spent. I'm not angry, I'm not frustrated, you know. If I die, I die. I'm not upset. I'll jump into a Sheikah, re-gear up, and off I go. Currently, though, yeah. If Season 3 doesn't bring anything, I'm not too sure what's going to happen. 
you know, I'm a little concerned that they're going to focus more on PvP-based content instead of PvE. And personally, I think they should be throwing PvE at us. Global events. You know, the St. Patrick's Day was awesome. I had so much fun with it. Obviously, every, once everyone knew about it, it was harder to get it. But, you know, initially, I loved it. I thought it was such a cool concept. A global event. Everyone can see it. Everyone can do it. There's no restrictions. You know, you have a meme gun for one round. You can, And if you extract with it, it disappears. I think the same concept should apply, but to POIs. You know, a locked POI, for instance, you know, you go into the embassy. And once you clear out the embassy, a boss comes in. And that boss has a unique weapon. Like, let's say it's a one-shot shotgun. So you can go around one-shotting people, one-shotting bots. But as soon as you exfil, that's it. Done. The gun disappears. You know, it gives the game something to go for. Because currently, without a mission telling to you, people have no reason to go to a POI. Too many bots, no reasons to go there. They can get the loot elsewhere. It makes no sense to me. Like, realistically, getting a POI key for, you know, Albajra Fortress or, you know, a shopping centre or should actually make sense. You should go in there. It should be difficult. You know, there should be some reason why you're going in there. And, you know, another thing is if you are in a POI and you're killing the bots, they should have a chance to drop keys. Like... It makes no sense that I have to find a shopping mall security key on the other side of a map and then I have to come to the shopping centre only to go in the room and there's minimal loot. Like, why would I do it? It should be that if you're killing bots in that area, they have a higher chance of dropping in that area. That makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you like that Easter egg scavenger hunt style play, but... Me personally, if I pick up a key and I'm near the spot, absolutely going to use it. And I'll go out of my way to use it because, you know, if you get a free kill streak, you know, you might get a mission item. And it's just fun. Like, who doesn't love looting? Anyway, a couple other points that I want to get into. Currently... You know, people are on the fence about this whole PvP, PvE thing. Now, I have a couple of ideas that I would love to see. I know they're never going to happen. But personally, I think PvP should have more consequences. I love PvPing, but if I had more challenge, I probably wouldn't do it as often. Let's say... You know, you can go to a bounty bounty board or something every game, and it's the same as, like, buy stations. Or you can go to just the buy station. You can set up a bounty system. You can look at it, see what players are killing, who's the highest killing players on the map, and you can put a bounty on their head, similar to a hunt contract, but everybody can see it. You know, if you've got a player that's wiped out, you know, 9, 10 players, you put a put a bounty on them. You go to the buy station and you say, yeah, 20 grand, go kill this player. And then everybody can see them. And that player either has to fight the whole server, which honestly would make for great clips. It would make the game more interesting, much like a most wanted contract in Warzone. It literally could be the same concept. It could literally just be most wanted. And this is the reason. They have killed, you know, nine players. And then you have a constant little beacon on you <laughs> following you around until you either exfil or somebody kills you. The next thing is perks. I like the idea of streaking perks. What I don't like is that my game crashes a lot of time before I can get to 10. You know, that's still a problem for me. I find it very frustrating that I can get six or seven of the perks and I can't get all the way. Why is it I cannot use the relentless amount of money to buy perks and have them carry over? And again, that sounds really overpowered because if you're a casual player, you know, you're never going to be able to get to that point. However, for me, 
you know, if I can go in and buy sleight of hand, oh my God, game changer. It can be a ridiculous amount. It could be a hundred grand. I don't care. Or it could just be that you find it on the map from killing a boss. Like simple things like that encourages PVE play. If I have a POI boss and I kill it and it drops potentially a gun or something like that, or it drops a perk, you know, it can just be the same thing. It could be that perk's only active for this game. That stuff can be done, but it's not. And I don't know why. You know, like, another thing I would love to see, and again, this is just me in particular, is why are we doing raids separate? Why not integrate them into DMZ? I would love to see that element. If you have a raid in DMZ, and my thought process was always this, there's a castle, right? It has a boss in it. You have to assault this castle. And when you do, it's just like any other stronghold weapons cache. Uh, weapons cache. It goes red on the map, alarms are blaring, things like that. So players know you're doing it. And they can either come join or they can come fight you. And you've got to push through this castle. It has SAM sites so you can't just, you know, fly in a helicopter over. There's things that I would love to see like that. And you've got to fight through this castle and it's really, you know, it's just relentless. And that gives players something to do. If there's six players doing that, awesome. You know, and the entrance can be underground. That way, you know, you can't be sniped from uh, surrounding areas. Or you put it far enough away that, you know, obviously players can't shoot at you whilst you're trying to push this castle, but they can come PvP you if they choose. Another thing with all that is I would love, love to see more, you know, lore just anything you know currently there are collectibles hidden collectibles in Almazra in Ashika and there's no easter eggs that go with them you know and maybe it's a tease for the future I'm not sure but like for instance in this clip I go get the drifting supply bag there's three masks in it they're worth 75,000 each awesome what do I do with them I sell them <laughs> okay, what was the point in putting them in here? You know, the same can go for, I don't know, blowtorches or something like that. If these items, when you extract, it shows them in your menu that you've extracted them and has a little story to be told. That would be amazing. It would just be something that you would want to do as a collectible item. Hey, have I got that? No, I don't. Where is it? Let's find the key. Awesome. Found the key. Let's unlock it. Let's do it. But as it stands, why? Like, what's the point? Here we go. I've got three masks. Cool concept. Awesome if you know where they are and you're looking to loot up. But why? I'm confused. What was the purpose of this? You know, the same can be said about the thieves' cache. You get a skull with engravings in it. Does it count towards missions? No. Well, what's the purpose? For me, it seems very strange. It's like, you know, they put little elements in, they put little Easter eggs in, and then that design team got sacked, and nothing else came from it. Activision was like, nah, we want more PvP, we want people to pay for skins. You know, we don't care about that. Maybe. Don't know. The next thing I, I was thinking about, and look, might be controversial, but I would love to see more events. And random. Completely random. You know, when I say it's controversial, I'm thinking of it this way. They're obviously going to encourage everyone to come to them. But as it stands, again, there is no reason why the chopper, the attack chopper, God, that thing annoys me. All it is, it's loud, 
it tracks you. And then for some reason, there's no uh, no other understanding as to why, but sometimes it just starts shooting at you and you have, you know, you didn't shoot at it, you've just stayed in the area too long. Why can't we have, you know, a convoy going around with an armoured truck and that armoured truck, if you blow it up or you disable it, you know, it has massive loot in it, has everything you need. I would love to see events like that regularly. And it, maybe it's like one event per server. One, you get an armored truck. One, you get, I don't know, maybe there's a, a, a special supply drop that's happening out in your port. You know, you've got Shadow Company landing at the port and they've got helicopters there and, you know, you've got to push onto the boat. And they're just holding that area. And if you get on there, there's these crates that they've unloaded. Something like that, like... Controversial because obviously if everybody can see it, a global event, it means people are going to camp it. People are going to fight you there. They're going to wait until you grab the loot and then kill you on the way out. But it keeps people engaged. You know, if there's special items in there or guaranteed drops, amazing. That brings me on to another element, something I would love to see. Holy crap. If you're going to make us do a scavenger mission... Tell us where the bloody items are. I'm sick to death of one blowtorch spawning in on a Sheikah, and yet it's a core po component of a tier two or three mission. Like, tell me where it's going to spawn, or let me craft it. You know, if, if, it, if I need an item for a mission to complete it, and it's that rare, you know, I feel like it's season one all over again, where... I'm hunting for blowtorches, and the rarity doesn't match the mission. Like, you know, for, cool, you've, you've upped it to 14,000 for the blowtorch. whoop de doo Yeah, okay, just, just then, I went past an item, journal entry. Perfect example. What does the journal say? I don't care. It has no value to me. I can't ex... If I exfil with it, it doesn't do anything. So I don't touch them. Well, that could be the collectibles we were talking about. Back to my thought. <sighs> Knowing where an item would spawn, like let's say blowtorches, they spawn in X buildings, they spawn near mechanic shops, they spawn here, gives you an idea where to look, but at, at, as it stands, a blowtorch can be anywhere. You know, I found it in medical centres, and I'm like, What? Why would anyone ever have a blowtorch unless they're doing some really medieval style, you know, <laughs> medical treatments? No one would ever have a blowtorch. Oh, it's just my brain. I can't understand who made these decisions. And then I get it. They've got a program that basically it has a bunch of items on the list. They've coded it in. And it just random generates it. And then they program where each item can spawn. So depending how tall the item is, the description of the item, it can spawn on X shelf. It can spawn in, you know, in a box. It can spawn in, you know, if it's an item that's rare, it can only spawn in lock spaces. It can spawn in this, you know, it can only be in supply drops. That's all it is. It's just a program that basically lists where its parameters work. There's no, like, distinction. Like, they haven't categorised buildings and gone, oh, well, it should spawn more in a service station because their algorithm of their program just recognises it as a shelf and it just random generates it. It's why the loot is so random. I mean, gun oil. Oh, my God. Gun oil. You can find it in police stations. Awesome. Cool. I'll go to police stations. You can also find it in... You know, convenience stores. Awesome. Cool. I'll have a look around. No. Nah. Realistically, weapons lockers. Oh, yes, you can find it in weapons lockers. W why isn't that just programmable? To me, that makes sense. If I'm going to finish a mission, I prefer to know where I have to go. At the moment, it's just a lucky dip. And half the time, you don't have the mission on when you find it. That seems to be, the, like, how I see it. But, yeah. Moving along. As it stands, and this is definitely going to tick some people off, insured weapons need to go. Simple as that. It is, I love it. I love having my own weapon, 
but it's a joke. You know, I can have three weapons on cooldown. I can go into a Sheikah, reset it in one game and have all three back. No stress. It means every game I'm playing, I either have one insured weapon or two insured weapons. Now, I know people love it. People love having their insured weapons. My biggest issue with it is it doesn't create balanced gameplay. You know, players aren't going to fight other players if they can't snipe people from 700 meters away. But as it stands, we can do that. And I love it. I love that skill gap. But for me, I look at it from a casual player base and I go, well, it's not fair on them. They can't shoot back. If they haven't got their second insured slot, so be it. So unfortunately, I think they need to go. Personally, I think it's a joke. I think it doesn't play into a proper looter shooter. It doesn't play into an extraction shooter properly. And it should just be that they go. Now, what I'm saying is they shouldn't go completely. But there should be ways you have to earn them. And this can tie into simple things. Daily missions. Completing missions. Certain missions give you tokens that you can use to buy a gun of your choice for that game. But it means you're risking something. You're risking a guaranteed token to get the gun you want. As it stands, there's no risk. I can just, you know, come in, get my weapons if I die. Awesome, I still have one slot spare. I just don't agree with it. I don't agree with it at all. I think it's too much like Warzone, you know. The only other way around it is, and again, people would say this is not ideal, you have to buy it, you know. So that means you 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 have to loot, you have to find stuff, you have to sell stuff, then go to the buy station, like Warzone, buy the gun of your choice. And it's not cheap, you know, 25 grand, 10 grand, whatever. You buy your gun, off you go. It means traffic will be high around buy centers, and it means people don't start with overpowered guns. It gives casuals a chance. It gives solos a chance. It gives everyone else a chance in the first five, ten minutes of the game. Now, obviously, infilling with nothing is not ideal either. But what you should be able to nominate is a gun of choice, AR, SMG, and a second gun of choice. So if you want pistol, you want something, you want melee, you want launcher, and it just randomly gives you something with one or two attachments, done. They could program that so easily. Just to just be a weapon generator, much like what they've got now when bots drop things. I would much rather see that because it means you never know what you're going to spawn in with. And you can choose not to spawn in with anything, obviously, your choice. But as it stands, having your own insured weapon just makes the game very unbalanced in my mind. You can't... You can't really say that it's a balanced feature for a game that has so few players in it. Like, it's great against bots. I get that. Because that is the biggest pain, bots. But what purpose does it serve? And at the end of the day, you know, you can lose it, get it back. But for casual players, I feel for you. You know, if you haven't got your slots unlocked, you're fighting players that have. And you always feel outgunned. And that's not a fair feeling. You know, in Warzone, everyone's got ground loot for such a long time. Very rarely do you fight players that have their own guns straight away. It's a very fair mixed battlefield until players build enough money, they can get to a buy station and get the gun of their choice. And that's fine. But they don't have it straight away. So I think this concept needs to change. I think personally... Moving forward, I would love to see it where you have tokens, guaranteed tokens, and you have to spend them to get a gun infilled in with, you know, and then you, that means you have to work towards missions. It means you have to work towards daily quests. Will it annoy people because they can't have the freedom to do what they want? Sure, whatever. And obviously over time, people will just stack these tokens. But if they have to go kill bosses to do it, they've earned the right for that. But it also gives casual players a chance. You know, it means that the veteran DMZ players aren't spawning in with the guns of their choice, smashing them, 
straight away, it means it gives people the opportunity to run around for five, ten minutes, and then they've got to start worrying about that. But currently, there's nothing stopping it. So why why would players change? You know, infilling with no weapons and fighting other players with their weapons, it just seems impossible to me. But look, it's why it's controversial. I would love to get rid of it altogether and change the system. You know, you don't have it in most games. and most games, you have to extract with that gun. You can put attachments on it, and then you can come back in with that gun. That makes sense too. And if you lose it, you lose it. You've got to start from scratch, you know. But I feel like for this type of game and how casual it is, that, you know, it just means the same problem is going to occur where veteran players are going to have these extremely kitted guns and the solo players are not going to be able to combat them. So I would love, love to just see that element change. You know, reduce the amount of insured slots, maybe give something like an item slot that's insured, that would be cool too. Like, you know, if you extract with certain items, similar to like the, you know, the tacticals at the moment, like you can have, you know, your choice of a recon drone or, you know, anti-armor rounds, blah, blah, blah. That would be interesting if that was a paid system. So if you extract with money, you have to buy that to go back in. And you can go to the shop that's daily and it has a token that you can buy with your funds, but one a day. So that would give multiple avenues of, you know, being able to have the custom weapons you want, but you've got to work for it. None of this easy mode, oh yeah, just dead drop 100k and a Sheikah and done. All three weapons are back. Or just get off, go play Warzone for a couple of hours and come back to ZMZ. Like, it just, it's just not a system that I like. It doesn't encourage the game itself where people are actually going to play it. You know, if people all are on the similar level at the start, you know, you're not going to have those PvP engagements straight away. Or if you do, they're going to be sloppy because you're not going to have guns that perform well. And I'd much prefer that. It would encourage CQB-style gameplay, none of this range sniping games play. One other thing, armor plates, holy moly. Armor plates is an interesting thing because you need them. Bots strip you of them all the time. I don't understand why there isn't just this bulk buy system. You know, every time I go to a buy, I need five to ten plates. I should just be able to click a button that says times five times ten. Instead of me having to click the button for each individual plate, it should just be times five, times ten. Or if you want to do it properly because three takes up a slot, you know, times three, times six, times nine. Or fill inventory. Awesome. That would be so helpful. I could go to a buy, just press one button and then run away. At the moment, I've got to stand there, click on the button just to get a few plates on. And while that's happening, there's bots shooting at you or there's players chasing you. It's such a silly concept to me. And all the buy stations are exposed. They're not in cover, most of them. Why aren't they in cover? Who leaves a buy station here? Like, what? That would that would be another thing I would love to see. You know, a black market. And the only way you find it is by doing missions. You do two recon missions, it reveals, ta-da, the black market where you can go buy special items, blowtorches, GPUs, but they cost more. And you can trade items and get things from it. That would be so, so much fun to see in this game. The black market in our Mazra. I would love to see it, but you have to do recon missions for it. Or you can stumble across it. Either or. It doesn't matter. You know, it would be great. Because then, currently, recon missions, nobody does them. Why would you do them? You've got to climb up a tower, expose yourself for 30 seconds or a minute, whatever it is. And half the time when you do it, it, you know, you pick it up and it sends you to this weird location, only then for you to have to come right back to the radio tower. What's that about? You think the drive would be somewhat near it? Nah. Half the time it's like, oh, yeah. Go south, pick it up. 
oh yeah, by the way, I go to the far most north radio tower, so you have to travel across the map to upload it, and it's a pittance of a reward. But not if it shows you things. Like, it should, it should show you things. Or, better yet, when you do them, you can select an item you're looking for, and the radio tower tells you, oh, there, there's an item somewhere in this area. That's what you're looking for. That would be great. Because it's risk versus reward. Someone is putting themselves in a position where they have to be exposed, but there's a reward at the end of it. Currently, tower, radio towers are just used for sniping people and doing random weird story missions where they make you upload drives there and you stand there for a minute getting shot at by bots. I, I don't see the point. Anyway. My final thought on things I would love, love to see is super hard challenge missions. You know... Things that are ridiculously hard to do or, you know, uh, like a scale of challenges outside of the faction missions, you know. Um, I would love to see challenge missions that anybody can do at any time, but they are incredibly, you know, either arduous or difficult or whatever it is. You know, like it could be extract half a million, kill 10 players in one game. You know, these things that can be, you know, accolades or challenges that actually give other players... Because, like, if I'm a solo player and I see there's a challenge, infill solo with no weapons, kill three players, exfill solo with no weapons, I'm like, okay, that's an interesting challenge. I'll give it a crack. And it gives you a special, you know, um, sticker or calling card or something. You know, very simple concept. Challenge missions outside of the factions would be amazing to see. I would love to see that. Give us all something extra to do in between the faction missions. And they're always active. You know, like, and make the challenge as ridiculous as you as they want. They don't have to be easy. But, it, it, like, you know, somebody looks at it and goes, oh, I want to give that a crack. You know, and it could be as simple as uh, blow up ten cars in one go. Like, or it could go as far as... You know, glide for over, you know, 500 meters. Um, you know, like simple stuff like that. But then it can also be activate every radio tower on, on the map. Um, it could be, you know, hit every POI and then do something in each of POI. You know, but like ridiculously hard story missions or challenge missions that, you know, uh, like, it would give grinders or, you know, people something extremely interesting to do. They might be like, hey, I'm bored. I want to have a crack at some of these challenges. Amazing. I would love to see that concept. We have these factions. I don't know who they are. They're not distinctive. Can we give them some distinction? Can we see where they are on the map? Every season it changes. One faction's overpowering another faction... Or, even better, and wouldn't this be the dream, certain areas are controlled by certain factions and you can align with them. You know, and if you do align with them by completing, say, the faction story missions, you earn respect with them. And once you do that, you start unlocking benefits, but you can only pick one faction. So once you do that faction, they give you a bunch of story missions, things like clear out a legion area, Clear out this POI. And then once you've done that, you then get added benefits. I don't know. It could be, you know, certain items sell for more. It could be, you know, you can always see certain vehicles on the map. Or, you know, the AI won't attack you in this area, for instance. You know, simple things. You don't want to do player buffs per se, but you want to do, like, environmental buffs where the AI won't attack you if you're, if you're aligned with Legion, that would be amazing. And every season it changes. Like, you know, Legion's overpowering the White Lotus. You know, Black Mouse has overtaken an area where Shadow Company was. Like, all this stuff, I'm, I'm sure they could program. But that would be amazing. You can align with someone, and that can directly go in with, like, a hostility thing. 
you know, automatically you can't align with other players if they're a different faction. So you can't join the squad if they're White Lotus and you're Legion. That would be awesome. You know, give people something else to do, like internal story missions. And if you want to change faction, you have to lose all the benefits and start those faction missions again. And then you can pick the one that you like, the one that gives you the bonuses that match your play style. You know, and it could just be simple. It could just be like when you go to buy stations, plates cost less because you're with Black Mouse or Shadow Company. You know, it could be that activating UAV tower stations is shorter. It could be that when you go up to the top of radio station, you can activate a ping. Like certain things just, oh, wouldn't they be so much fun? And it would give so much more engagement and depth to the current, you know, maps. And it wouldn't make it so much sandboxy. It would make it have purpose, you know, kind of like a Far Cry style game where, you know, you take over outposts, you do these things. You know, um, if you played For Honor, For Honor, the certain factions fight each other and the players basically dictate who's winning and they're taking over areas, like, that'd be awesome. And, then, yeah, you can go in those areas and you can fight all the factions, but then you come to a certain area and it's a certain safe area because you're aligned with that faction. Like, stuff like that would be amazing, and I know it's never going to happen. Never. But these things could make the game, like, iconic, you know, I want to see the change that makes this game, every time Activision makes a game, they have their DMZ. Or make it a standalone game. Whatever. At the moment, Warzone, the Battle Royale system, it's, you know, everyone loves a Battle Royale. But we need something else. You know, not everyone wants to play multiplayer, not everyone wants to play Battle Royale. DMZ could be the next big thing, if they do it right. And we'll see what comes in Season 3. And I'll be honest, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. I, I want to hear everything. I want to hear suggestions. Because when videos like this go up and, you know, a developer sees it, they might pinch ideas off us. And I'd rather have more ideas than less. But at the moment, I feel like the team that's in charge of DMZ either is very small compared to the rest... Like, the development team doing DMZ, it was like a pipe dream. They're like, oh, let's just see how it's received. And I'd love to see more. I'd love to see so much more depth, so much more content to it, so much more PvE, so much more global events, so many more things that encourage players to do things, collectible systems, key lockers. You can buy items to stash keys on instead of having carry it in your backpack. Like... Money and currency shouldn't be used to, uh, you know, give players a huge advantage. It should be more for quality of life things. You know, uh, item resets, you know, you have to buy your tacticals, your lethals, you know, things like that. Like, I think that the currency system that's in place currently doesn't make any sense to me. And it needs to change. It needs to be the, the currency is used to extract with. And that money is then used to buy items on a regular. Every time you infill, you have to buy tacticals, you have to buy ammunition, things like that. We're saying that, though, put more ammunition, like ammunition stations around. You know, that could easily be done as well. You know, ammunition and plates are very important. And if you can, you know, fill a slot and buy three extra plates for the start, I think most players would do that. But you have to sacrifice something. You can't come in with a tactical. So that means you have to sacrifice the extra ammo capacity. You know, or better yet, you can buy ammo bags. Oh my god. You can buy ammo storage bags. Similar to how we get backpacks and things like that. You loot them. You know, spare plate bag. Spare ammo bag. And just, it puts a little bit extra aside. And then when you extract with that, you get to keep it. That would be awesome. Stuff like that I would love to see. You know, even much like multiplayer, once you get to the max level, you can alternate. You know how you can switch between the two uh, tacticals that you want to choose? Like, oh, yes, I want an ammunition box, but then this time I want a deployable cover. You should be able to do that as well, where you can buy a second tactical slot and you can hold two. So if you wanted to hold two... Ammo, you know, ammo boxes, you can. 
And when you infill with it, you have two ammo boxes, but it means you can have a recon drone and an ammo box. So if you need to do a mission for a recon drone, you've got a recon drone and all that. Stuff like that can be done. I don't know why it's not done, but, you know, it would give more depth. And frankly, I just would love to just see some of the bugs fixed. You know, uh, season three, if they're going to do it, they need to have bugs fixed, realistically. But that's not a thing. So this has been a long-winded video. It's probably one of the longest videos I've ever done. I really, really would love if people would sit back and give me feedback. Tell me your thoughts on this. Tell me what you think. Tell me your wish list. Tell me what you want to see change in DMZ. Tell me if you're enjoying it, but there are things that if they implemented, it would make your experience better. I want to know it all, you know. In, a, <laughs> in an imperfect world, a developer sits down, they watch this video, they listen to the feedback, and they implement changes. I don't know if that'll ever happen. You know, I'm not the first one to do a video like this. But in my mind, the more people that mention it, the more people that want to see change, the more people that discuss, show enthusiasm and passion, the more chance we have that a developer is going to pick it up and go, yeah, this is a real thing. This is a real potential. Let's invest some time, money, and let's make this game amazing. And let's increase the playability. Let's change it from a sandbox and actually give it some replayability. So leave a comment. Uh, let's have a discussion. I will respond to every comment on this video. Um, the first clip that I was doing was actually the Predator mission. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's infill solo, uh, no weapons, uh, kill three operators and extract with 150k. So that was on a Sheikah. Uh, the second one, we're doing the hostage mission. We have to go around and kill, you know, the commander and all that with a pistol, basically, whilst holding a hostage. And I was helping a mate do that. Um, awesome, guys. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you. Bye.